Hey guys, Sarn speaking with Earthwalker Primitives. It's the second uh, video for our, our uh, not cordage and, and rope series. Um, what we're going over today, I mentioned in the first video the term, different terminologies, and we mentioned whipping and how important whipping is for a rope to preserve it, save it, and also be more uh, safe and secure uh, for your for your usage. And uh, like I said, this is uh, the whipping. I explained, whipping is nothing more than cordage wrapped in a certain manner around the end of a rope to uh, keep its end from fraying and coming undone because all a rope is is braided small ropes. You know, this is, oh, I don't know how many ropes this is. This is probably about, you know, I'd say about eight different braids braided together. And if left undone, like this one was, it'll come, it'll just fray and it'll fall apart and you'll lose rope, you'll lose the use of the cordage because it's going to keep on fraying. Plus, it's also a security measure that will not work well in a knot or any lashing, and uh, it's just going to keep on getting further and further undone. And it could be a safety factor. Also, when you have something whipped, it makes it easier for you to work with it, grab it, run it through something, eyelets, blocks, whatever that you might be using it for. So right now we're going to get ready and set up to uh, show you how to whip the end of a rope. Okay, so we got ourselves set up here, and we're going to do the same to this end of this this rope that we that is done on the other end of uh, of this rope with the whipping. And what I'm going to be using for that, you can use any other cordage as long as it's going to be durable enough to withstand you know tightening up on itself to do it. You know, it's not no prescribed uh, type of cordage you have to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this braided nylon. That I have here. Just cutting the ends off that are frayed. And uh, I'd say I got about maybe, maybe almost three feet, maybe two feet of this cordage. And uh, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the end of the rope. We don't want to cut this off. We want to leave this as is for right now. Okay. But we're going to take our cordage. Take the running end and make a bite. All right. We discussed bite in the tu in the in terminology tutorial, but we have our bite there, right? Now I'm going to place this on top of this so the bite is about a half an inch over the end of the rope. All right, over this frayed end, you can mash it down, um, and you want to make make that bite extend about a half an inch above that rope, and that's important. For the way the mechanics of this of this uh, whipping works, all right. Then you're going to come down here and you're going to start your whipping at the opposite end, all right. Just going to come down here. You got your running end of that cordage. You got your standing end or parallel. And you can just pinch with your finger and hold it in place. And you can let this dangle out. And uh, but while you're doing this procedure, you're going to Hold on, let me back up here. I made that way too big, I'm sorry. Thinking about talking to you and explaining it, but I'm not paying attention to what I'm actually doing. Alright. So that's about good right there. So anyway, we're about, like I said, the plate is about a half an inch extended past. Now, the next step we're going to begin wrapping this, but the first thing you want to look at is to see which way the braids of the rope are turning. Uh, the braids of the rope here are turning this way, away from me. So I want to actually start wrapping that direction. It's important that you wrap the whipping in the direction the braids go. If you go opposite, if you do wrap it in the direction the braids go, they actually lock into the braids. This, this cord is going to kind of lock in and the friction is going to help hold that whipping in place. If you go against it, there's less friction and a possibility of that whipping slipping off. I mean, there is a possibility of that whipping actually getting loose and slipping off because it's not, that doesn't have anything holding it in place. So it's important to, to look at the cordage you're, you're whipping and make sure you follow the direction that that cordage goes. So we're going to begin wrapping. And this, it's important to keep this tight as possible. All right, you should actually see when you're whipping it when you're wrapping it, that the portion that's being whipped is actually smaller in diameter than the rest of the rope. 
that's a good way to tell if you're putting enough pressure and tension on it to keep it in place. So we're going to keep on, I'm going to whip this. And that working end, that one thing I forgot to mention, that working end, the running end, I'm sorry, that we left back here, you need to make sure there's a tag sticking out. All right, when you start wrapping, you start whipping it, you want to come up and leave a little bit of tag, because that's how we're going to pull this to tighten it down. Now, if it's a light rope like this, just one layer of whipping would suffice. It's not a very thick rope. It's not a very heavy rope. This is just cotton, cotton rope. So one layer of this whipping is fine, but if it's a heavier rope, a thicker rope, you know, you might want to go leave yourself enough um, of cordage for whipping so you can whip up and down maybe two or three times to give it a little bit more uh, strength and security. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead, I made this whipping a little bit big, a little bit long, and a little bit further away from the end of the rope. But that's okay, you can either leave this end where you can cut it down, um, but we'll discuss that in a minute. But what you want to do, when you end your whipping, wherever you end, you want to be at least a half an inch back from the end of the rope. So just like, remember, the two magic measurements are a half an inch. You want the bite of your whipping to extend half an inch and you want your your uh, whipping to end no less than a half an inch from the end of the rope all right if you if you end your whipping too close to the end of the rope now you notice I'm leaving a good big length of rope here um, which is good which is fine but if you leave less than a half an inch what can happen is that whipping can over time slip off the rope and uh, you know your, your whipping will fail so you got to leave at least a half an inch of that rope because what will happen is that rope will fray and it'll be like a plug and it'll help lock that whipping in place. But I'm going to go ahead and end my whipping right here. Now what I'm going to do is I got that bite. So I'm going to take the end of my uh, end of my whipping here and run it through that bite. All right. I'm just going to hold it in place. Now I'm going to come back down here to my little tag that we left. And I'm going to pull that through. And I'm going to pull. If you can get it to come all, if you can get it to pull the end of the whipping all the way through, that's great. If not, get it down as far as you can and pull on that tight. And that's going to help tighten down. It's securing the end of the rope inside underneath the whipping, but it's also tightening the whole entire mechanism down. As you can see, it it it, it curved the end of that rope because it pulled it so tight. All right. Now this whip, this end of the of the whipping did come all the way down. It's right there. That's where that bite is. So that's good. You know, it, it pulled down, so it's it's pretty secure in there. And now I'm just going to take take my knife, and I'm just going to slice off the ends of the whipping right up on the whipping itself. All right. You don't want to leave them frayed, or you don't want to leave an end out. You don't want to tie a knot. You know, if you leave an end frayed, that can cause the, the rope to slip. If you tie it in a knot or anything, it, it can cause it to be uh, snagged or something. All right, now you see, like I said, I left a good bit, a lot of extra. I did that mostly for demonstration because I'm actually going to cut this off, but I'm going to leave, like I said, at least a half an inch. I left a, maybe a quarter, I left maybe a quarter of an inch more on that, uh, on that whipping. All right. So you see, that's how you that's how you whip a rope. Put a whipping on the end of a rope, so you can help secure that end from fraying. All right, so there's our whipped end 
like I said, with at least a half an inch, a little bit more than a half an inch out there, because what's going to happen now, that'll actually fray out a little bit as I'm doing with my finger, and it kind of forms a plug, because now it's thicker at this end, thicker at this end, so that whipping is held in place, because you can see how it's compressed, so it's actually made the diameter of the cordage uh, thinner. So that's important to make sure you do that to your ropes, for one, uh, to maintain their serviceability so they're not fraying, but also for safety. And now what we're going to discuss is uh, um, what about when you want to cut a rope? Because it's important to know how to whip to repair a rope, as we did, but also whenever you need to cut a rope, if you need to cut a rope in half or cut a few feet off, you want to do the same thing to the ends. And uh, I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do that in, uh, instead of cutting the rope and then uh, whipping the ends when they're fraying. I'm going to show you a, a neat, the neatest and a easiest, uh, uh, neat as in clean and neat to do it. Uh, not neat as in cool, unless you think it's cool. But uh, I'm going to show you a, a, a neat way uh, of doing that.